Okay. Now, today we'll talk about power and privilege in the U.S. because each society is different. And we will look at different issues. You must have your one sheet, sheet, sheet. If you have to do a report, this is it. Just copy this. Okay? You're looking at the politics of class, ethnicity, race, religion, sex, as opposed to gender, fashion, culture, age, ability, values, and other differences. We will go through these slides very quickly because of current concern. You can download them online. I'll, I'll put them on slideshareacademia.edu and maybe YouTube as well. Okay, so here are what we're looking for. Is it all, you know, cheesy? How is the situation like uh, in the U.S.? And if you want to say something really urgently, you have a burning desire to speak up, just raise your hand and speak up. Because you might have 10 people who want to speak up at the same time. It's kind of popcorn, impossible. Okay, so we'll go through the usual thing. So here, in a cheat sheet, this is the summary of the whole thing. To say, you know, there are different people based on their quality, social economic profile, for which they have power and privilege. But that changes. Okay, sometimes, okay, raise your hand if you feel it. You can be anonymous if you don't want to, it's safe zone. If you feel you're rich, this is extreme, of course, there's a lot in between. You feel you're poor, everyone wants to be okay. And you have, you're white, or some white in you, somehow. Or you're colored, I'm raising my hand. Okay. If you're Christian, again, safe zone if you don't want to, you're not Christian. Okay, and if you're male, okay, if you're female, we'll see the others later. If you, this is again, same zone, you can decide not to, or you can lie, okay, that's fair enough. Uh, if you're straight, uh, if you're LGBTQIA, okay, and then if you, fashion victim means, oh, I have to wear Adidas, I have to wear, uh, Versace, Versace. I'm sure you know what it is. Oh God, that's a song. <laughs> and Jay-Z's favorite, Tom Ford, right? You are a fashion victim, raise your hand. Nobody wants to admit, huh? <laughs> okay, and you're not a victim. You don't care about brands. Okay, and then your mainstream culture, like, you know, I have to be preppy, you know, I have to wear my clothes properly, khaki. Mainstream, nothing wrong or right, and your alternative, like, I don't care how you look like, I'm going to be who I am, okay, and you are a young adult, you are old or minor, maybe I'm minor, <laughs> okay, you are able, whatever that means, you have other abilities, okay, uh, you like to compete, I have to be number one, I have to be this club, I've done so many honors. You're cooperative. Raise your hand. And you're slim and tall and normal. You're like a fashion model. Or at least, you think. <laughs> okay. And you are like me, short and fat. And vegan. Okay. Oh, well, I'm club mates here, huh? Okay. So these are some power relationships you can see. Some books, maybe it's on the back page of the yellow cheat sheet. You want to look at first kind of letters work. Bell Hooks, Michelle Alexander, The New Jim Crow, uh, uh, Zizek, uh, Noam Chomsky, and Howard Zinn. Okay? Those are some literature you can look at. So, introduction. Now, there's so many problems we face in the US today, among which are the following. Demonizing Muslims and immigrants and undocumented people, uh, dismantling the social safety net, uh, issues on the right to choice, reproductive health, health care cuts, corporate tax breaks, attack on unions, gay rights restrictions, voter suppression types, uh, cuts for the rich, cuts to education, uh, fake scandals, privatization, problems with the environment, conspiracy theories, 
deregulation, government shutdown, and so on. So many problems that we face. And then we have two sides of people. Again, this is just, I'm putting it in dichotomy, but reality is more complex, right? And uh, we will see one by one later. More problems. There's a widening gap between the rich and the poor. And there's fear, there's you know, predominant anti-terrorism, the use of drones, and then there's peace movement against it, and fear of foreigners, and we've discussed it in the plenary session this morning, and people of color, and fear of Muslims, and it's the rich who are in control. Okay? More problem, the people who are underrepresented are invisible, or the minorities are misrepresented. So the question I raise are, who have power and privilege in the US, and who do not have power and privilege? Okay. So we will identify power and uh, privilege in the US, and to empower the uh, people who do not have power and influence. Definition of power is uh, the ability to uh, cause another person to do as you wish. Okay? And power is related to knowledge, according to Michel Foucault. And privilege means you know, the advantage that one person has over the others. Okay? So I'll be talking about uh, case studies, pop culture, no time for video clips, so you'll see memes, you know, things that go around the, the web. Uh, I removed it, I wrote some online jokes. So there are two ways of looking at the world. The so-called uncritical theories, like the usual theories, the positivist approach, that we say everything is neutral, there's one way of looking at things, everything is cold and scientific. The other approach is not really, they're social classes, and where we, what we see depends on where we sit. If I'm a poor brown male, I see things differently from a rich white female. Let's say a white person. See, there are different ways of looking at things. And if my, I, my country, for instance, I came from, I don't know, like, let's say Egypt, was colonized by the British. I have another way of looking at the world as opposed to how the British look at uh, Egypt, okay? So there's partisanship. There's nothing wrong with taking sides. So we're saying there are many theories that say it's okay to take sides and we should be proud of it. Okay. Now, uh, common themes that we see are power and oppression. Okay, they're really very much correlated. But we will also see Freire <coughs> say that uh, just because you didn't have power, you want to be in power, does not mean you will be the future uh, oppressor. That's quite possible. Okay, the oppressed might aspire to be the future oppressor. That's a danger. Okay, there's no romanticizing that the oppressed will be the future heroes and heroines and everything will be heaven on earth. No such uh, uh, certainty. Now, let's look at things one by one. There's human power and privilege. First of all, human beings control everything from going to the zoo. So we, we uh, eat <coughs> animals, and we eat chicken, okay? Uh, and uh, hog, and beef, and so on. And most of which are farm-raised, like really no space for them to move around. They get hurt. And when you have nice dumb pillow for you to sleep on, this is how they pluck the feathers. There are videos, there there are links, but again, no time for us to do that. And we eat them, we wear them, we experiment on them, and we have fun with them. Okay, so there's the human power uh, over the rest, the, the non-human animals. We're, we're, ha we're animals anyway, to, to begin with. And our leather came from some animal, okay? And no, there's Versace bags that come from some snakes. They might have been you know, uh, killed or even uh, with their skin removed while they're still alive. And in Spain, they have this bull run. And women get raped okay? in just four days. There are 100 rapes. It happens. And we, we think everything should, should please us. Anything and everything, all animals, including a Buddhist monk. 
and the world is on fire. We burn fossil fuel, we frack here and frack there, and move them from Canada to maybe hoping to move them to Texas and then maybe to China. And that's, that's the state of the world. And Bandana Shiva, a woman, who spearheads uh, environmental movement, she's a physicist, uh, talking about environmentalism and how we should really take care of it. And she travels the world. She's from India, talking about that. So one. The second one. The second uh, element of power will be based on appearance, fashion, physics, ability, and so on. The culture of competition is built in the U.S. system. Remember this morning, uh, we uh, talked about, uh, Dr. Stovall talked about, you know, you have to go to school, ACT, SAT. That's competition. There's a cut off uh, for certain schools. You have to have this grade, but it doesn't mean a thing, right? So it only means you were able to do the exam on that day, period. Yeah. Oh, Vandana Shiva. V A N D A. N A S H I V A. She has written a lot of books and articles. She's very well known in the environmental movement, the progressive movement. Okay, so we're taught to compete. I have to have better grades than you. I have to be number one. There's no such thing as number two. If you compete, you're there to win number one. You're not there to win number two. That's a culture. And blaming others. Like something went wrong, it's not my fault. It has to be somebody's fault. Maybe it's yours. And this is a funny cartoon of uh, the, the women here saying, do their men force them to dress that way? How awful. And then they're saying, do their men force them to dress that way? How awful. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a matter of perspective. They think the other is oppressed and in a bad state. The feeling is neutral. Okay. And there's a bias against disability and bias in favor of the young ones, and bias in favor of the skinny ones, right? To the extent that many people really go anorexic, bulimic, and so on. And whatever, even if Dow says we want all sides of women, it's still objectifying women. You're still selling bodies. Why don't we just do away with it? And there's size discrimination. And Oprah said, I give up. I will accept who I am. Now, I've had all the best trainers and weight specialists, this is me. Stop it. They just accept me who, as I am. And there's a pressure to be beautiful. And then it's usually the men's standards. Okay, they say, oh, men want this. And they change through time. And then we should stop this misogynistic body policing. Okay? And Russian victim. We're told if you don't have the right model, the right brand, right this and that, people look down on you. Why is your brand like that? Or why, is your why are your clothes generic? Like, really? There's such a thing as generic? Yeah, I wear them. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, they will say, okay, if you're not. And then you, you have to listen to the right music, you know, like Trey, you know, uh, Jay Z, Rihanna, and Chris Brown would beat her up. And people listen to them, hey, still. Okay, I don't know why. And Dustin Hoffman, maybe you know him, maybe you don't. He's my generation. Said when he performed the movie, he acted as a woman. He said it was so difficult. He cried because he said he cannot be beautiful. He told the makeup artist, make me more beautiful. They said, that's it. That's how far it goes. Like, this is how I do He cried. Like, he said, now I understand how to be a woman. The pressure to look beautiful. This is coming from a man. Just in the You know, I forgot the name of the movie. Tootsie. Yeah, thank you. It's my generation. <laughs> okay, I uh, have to have the right brand. I got the Giants and uh, Adidas, Nike, Reebok. If you wear generic, it doesn't count. Like, why are you wearing generic? Okay, so we want, went through human power and privilege, and then we went to not the basis of power on your clothes, your appearance, your thinness, your tallness, and so on. Not white power and privilege, uh, according to Miriam Kaffer and Baumgartner. Some of you have read this, I think, in grad school. Yes, you did. Okay, there is institutionalized discrimination. This is what Dr. Stovall called the structural violence. 
It's the condition under which we live. 